All right. Hey, Miss Watt, how's it going? Hey, Mr. Z. You ready to talk about geology here a little bit? Of course I am. I'm, I'm up for it any day. What are we talking about today? We're doing convergent plate boundaries. Ooh. Huh. And we, uh, you should be uh, seeing the learning objectives uh, above us here. We've got a couple of them. This is actually going to be a, a quick segment. Uh, the first uh, learning objective is, is that I can uh, compare the uh, b uh, bathymetric profiles of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. This means I can estimate, sorry, uh, measure <clears throat> or note the similarities and dissimilarities between the items or ideas. Okay, and then after that we're going to be talking about the three different types of convergent plate boundaries. So we'll talk about ocean-ocean plate collisions. We'll talk about continental and oceanic plates colliding, and then we'll talk about what happens when continental and continental plates collide. So let's go ahead to the next slide. Oh, one of my favorite subjects. Convergent plate boundaries. Let's take a look at that word, convergent, because we've already talked about divergent in the last segment, and you should have picked up that that's plates that are moving away from each other. So the example that we used was South America and Africa, and there being a divergent boundary in between those two, the mid-ocean ridge, where we have two plates moving away. This is opposite, I think, Ms. Awan. Yeah, so we're going to talk about things converging, plates moving together, moving towards each other. And the first thing that we want to do here is we want to look at the features that are shown on this topographic profile. So let's start over here on the western edge of this topographic profile, and let's look kind of at the shape of this. So here we have a graph taken from My World GIS, and you'll be doing this in class. So uh, as you're watching the video, you're probably going to want to be taking notes and following along with us, so we'll help you out with some things to write down. So we're going to start over here on the west. This is almost in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, right, Mr. Z? I would agree. And this looks like a little hill or a little mountain range underwater, right? Mm -hmm. So the depth of it is about 3,000, what are the units here? I'll bet these are uh, feet underwater, I'm guessing. And there's this little mountain range, and then as we move towards the east, we come into a very flat area of the Pacific Ocean floor. I'm wondering if they remember what that area is called. I don't know. It starts with an A, and uh, I think it's the Abyssal Plain. Yep, you're right. It's the Abyssal Plain. And then you'll notice that there's another little mountain or hill, again, underwater, before you get to the South American coast in this case. Mm -hmm. And then there's a depression. A real large depression, it yeah, looks like. a large depression. And then, after that depression, you really climb up quickly onto the continent of South America, and I bet you that's the Andes Mountains right there. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I so. think it is. And it looks, uh, looks a lot different than what we saw a couple segments ago when we looked at the topographic map of the Atlantic Ocean. It doesn't look the same. And something that you may want to go back and take a look at to compare and contrast the two. All right. So let's talk about the names of these things. So here again we've got a spreading center, right? This is mm -hmm. a divergent plate boundary. In this case, this is the East Pacific Rise. So for you guys taking notes, I think you probably want to draw some arrows showing that this is the spreading center, the divergent plate boundary, where the magma is going to come up, create new ocean crust, and it's going to spread out here towards the east and towards the west. Mm -hmm. And then this feature again was the? Abyssal plain. The abyssal plain, okay. And we talked about this low area. What's this one called again? Uh, it's called a trench. Okay. And why is this trench here? Well, you know what, that's where plates are actually converging. And if you actually take a look at the picture on the screen in the upper left-hand corner, uh, you can actually see more of a real-life picture of what's going on there. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at that. Now, we have a couple of different types of plates, and that's going to be really important here in this segment. We have an oceanic plate, and then we have a continental plate. And their makeups are really different. It's different types of rock, and those different rock types have different densities. So what's okay. the oceanic plate made of? Then? It's made of a rock called basalt. Okay, and right? that's different from the continental plate? It is, it is, which is more of a granitic type rock. And the oceanic crust is a lot more dense than the continental crust. And that's going to play a huge factor in what's actually going on here. So if I have two plates, and they're going to collide or converge with each other, the one that is more dense 
which is the oceanic plate, which actually has a lot more iron in it, is actually going to subduct or go underneath the continental plate. Hmm. So I remember that from Chem 1 when we were learning about densities, that the mm -hmm. lighter or the lower density object would float up on top of the higher density object. So you're saying the oceanic plate is higher in density, it's going to go down underneath mm -hmm. the lower density continental plate. Yeah. And that's what's being shown in the picture up here, right, on the left. So as you're taking notes, you might want to make sure that you write something down about the density of that ocean plate in your diagram. It's called the Cocos Plate. And on the east side or the right side of the picture, where it says Caribbean plate, you might want to note that that would be a lower density rock, and that's why it's floating up above that oceanic plate. And you can see those same features in the topographic map that's over here on the bottom right. You, can, you should be able to identify the trench and then the mountains themselves, which should be illustrated over here to kind of see that same line. Okay, and the mountains that are being shown in the picture on the top left, that's a volcanic mountain. Mm -hmm. And is that what we're seeing on the coast of South America, along the western coast? Are we seeing some volcanic mountains in that area, too? We are. Excellent. So I wonder how this is really different from the Atlantic Ocean profile. So let's take a look at that next. You ready to move on? Yep. All right, let's go on. Well, so this slide, we have a comparison of the Pacific Ocean floor topography and the Atlantic Ocean floor topography. So we should be able to go in really quickly and label each of the features that are shown in these two topographic profiles. Which one would you like to do, Atlantic or Pacific for the students? Um, I'll take the Atlantic Ocean okay. over here. So I'm going to be looking here at the bottom left-hand corner. So we can start over here on the far left, which is going to be off the coast of the United States. I would say that is Virginia, yeah. somewhere around there. Right? And we can see this line that goes across the entire Atlantic Ocean, and then we're on the west coast of Africa. Right? And then below here, we have the topography of the ocean floor. Right? And we can take a look at the bathymetry map here, and we can see that there is a large mountain-like shape here in the middle that we've already seen before, and that you should be able to identify. All right? And... Uh, if you haven't got it already, I'll let you know what it is. That's the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, or the Mid-Ocean Ridge, or the more that we've been referring to in the last couple of segments. So we want the students to label this on We definitely page. want them to yep. label that, of Good. course. And you know what? If you start taking a look at the other bathymetry map that Mr. Watt's going to talk about, they definitely look a lot different from each other. They're not the same. Yeah. So do you want to go over the shelf and the slope and the rise and the abyssal plane oh, on that yeah. Atlantic? Sure. Just as a review. Sure. Probably a good idea. Yeah, it is a good idea. So I have the uh, mid-ocean ridge over here, um, and then I move on to the abyssal plain, right? And then as I move up over here, I have the slope. And then I come up here. It's a little difficult to see. I have... The shelf is up here, yeah. The shelf? Yeah. And so the, the, really rise the rise is really yeah. hard to see on Yeah, Africa. that is kind of yeah. difficult to see. You can see it a little bit better on the, the, yeah. the my, western edge. My so. hair is in the way, and so oh, I just can't even see it. <laughs> right? So yeah, there's the rise right there. A little bit easier to see over there on the, uh, uh, off the coast of the United States than it is okay. on this side. All right, so let's take a look at the Pacific topography then. In this case, you don't see a pronounced mid-ocean ridge at all. What we're seeing is a very broad and flat abyssal plain going all the way across until you almost reach the coast of South America. So you can see up above, the white line indicates where this cross section was taken from. And just at the edge of it, we're going to see the trench, which again is deep underwater, where that oceanic plate is actually meeting the South American plate, and this oceanic plate is being subducted down underneath the South American plate, and then climbing up here onto the South American continent. So as you're labeling this, you definitely want to label this as the ocean trench. Probably want to say that that's where the subduction zone actually is, and then label the abyssal plain here. Now, a little bit later on, we're going to talk about why there is such a difference in the topography of the Atlantic and the Pacific when we start mm -hmm. to think about the spreading rates and yeah. how that impacts what happens to the topography of the ocean floor. But for now, let's move on. Yeah, definitely.
Okay, so well, this, um, this video, I think, will be a good opportunity for the students to think about some of the other things that happen at a convergent plate boundary. So we're going we're gonna to step away for a second and ask you to go back up to the slide deck. Click on this video. It's a really short one, but I think you'll get some pretty good ideas of the kinds of things that accompany a subduction zone. So they'll be talking a little bit about earthquakes and tsunamis and some other yeah, it's gonna kind give of rock you a really, world things. Yeah, it's right? going to give you a really good visual of what's going on there. All right, so uh, join us back as soon as you watch the video. Don't forget to take some notes on that video too, please. Okay, well, welcome back. back. Hope you liked that video. Back again, back yeah. again. What are we talking about on this slide? I think we're talking about more convergent plate boundaries. Looks like there are three different types of them. There are, and you know what? We talked about two different types of plates, one being oceanic and one being continental, and they're different characteristics, right? Well, if there is a couple different kinds of plates, then we can probably have some different interactions between them, right? And we actually have three different interactions, and these are all labeled here on this slide. So let's take a closer look at them. Let's remember, though, real fast, what causes subduction itself to occur. It was a difference in the density mm -hmm. between the plates, right? You're right. Okay. You're right. So the denser plate is going to be subducted under the less dense and plate. And which one's more dense again? That would be the oceanic plate. It's oceanic. just older and colder, and it's made of material, basaltic material, that has more iron and more magnesium in it mm -hmm. than the granitic and, continental crust. And it's also thinner, too. Right? It's yeah. not as thick as the continental True. crust, too, which also would play a part in this. Great, so All what right. are the three different types of convergent plate boundaries? All right, well, let's take a look over here at the top right. We'll start up there, and this is the one that we looked at um, uh, uh, in the last couple of slides here. Um, so we have the oceanic crust, which is over here on the left, and it's moving towards the coast or towards the right, and it is subducting underneath the continental crust. And we can see the trench, it's just kind of like a top or a bird's eye view along with the cross section, so maybe you get a better idea of what's actually going on here. We can see that the oceanic crust itself is being destroyed down here into the asthenosphere, which then creates volcanic activity up at the surface. So wherever we have these types of boundaries, it's usually accompanied by some kind of volcanic activity. And a good place for students to look for examples of that would be around the Pacific Ocean, right? In that circle Pacific ring of fire kind of region. Exactly. Good. Exactly. All right, so then the second type that we're going to talk about, we're going to jump down here because yeah. it's a similar situation. But in this case, we have two oceanic plates that are colliding. And even though it's two oceanic plates, one of those plates is being subducted. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that one plate would be subducted is that this plate, the one here on the right side, for some reason or another, might be a little bit denser. A little bit more. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit older, and maybe it's colder, and because yeah. of that, it might be denser than the overriding plate here shown on the left side. So when we have two oceanic plates collide with each other, mm -hmm. we still have a subduction zone. Yep. There's still a trench in front of them. Yep. So very similar to the pattern of an oceanic and a continental plate colliding. And we still get that volcanic activity as well. Absolutely. That's still present there. So later on we'll be talking about this arc of volcanoes, the volcanic island arc, that is a good telltale sign for a situation where you've got an oceanic-oceanic convergent plate boundary. Exactly. Well, let's talk about this third one. And this last one, well now we've got two continental crusts, right, and they're going to converge or collide together. Now, one of them isn't thinner than the other, and one of them isn't any more or any less dense than the other one. So we're not really going to see subduction here, mm. right? So what we see is, is that these continental crusts just kind of slam into each other, and they really don't have anywhere else to go but actually go up, right? And what do you think we find there at that collision? I think we're going to find a major mountain range. Yeah, exactly. So, and I always remember this by actually taking my hands right and then just putting them together and then with my fingers just going up because there's nowhere else for them to go but up and then those fingers end up becoming the mountains so what's a good example of continental continental convergence you know uh i remember looking at that pangea slide and seeing india going up into eurasia and i think where india is now or the northern part of india i think there's a big mountain range uh, there i think that's the himalayas did you know that the himalayas are still growing 
They are. They are. I didn't know that. Mount Everest is, as we're sitting here watching this video, getting taller. Huh. Huh. So students, I hope you took notes on the three different types of convergent plate boundaries here. And uh, let's see if we've got a mastery check coming up here. Now, one more slide. Oh, we don't. One more slide. Oh, we got a couple more slides. So here in this one, we're going to talk a little bit about putting this together just a little bit more. Yeah. And we've got two pictures here taken from Google Earth. And there's a nice legend over here on the side that shows us the age of the ocean floor from present day zero down at the bottom up to about 270 million years old up at the top. So we can see the colors. So basically, if it's red or yellow, it's kind of newer crust than yeah, if it's, it's green younger. or blue, right? It's younger. Okay, so let's look at um, let's look at the Atlantic Ocean first. Here's Africa on the right, mm -hmm. and here's South America on the left, and you can see the red, the deeper red color. That would be the trace of the currently forming ocean floor. So that would be the trace of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Mm -hmm. And we actually saw a slide just like this, and we're gonna see another one really similar, the next slide, uh, where we actually see the rock ages. And this actually almost tells us the same thing. The further away we move, either east or west, from that mid-ocean ridge, the rocks get older. And they're almost like a mirror image of each other if we look at the colors on either side. So the further away you are, or where you are on the coast, if you're that far away, the rocks are the oldest. Okay, and we've got a little bit different situation in the Pacific. So let's focus in on the new crust, which again is that dark red or brown colored crust, and that's the East Pacific rise down here. And you can see moving away to the east towards South America or moving away to the west out into the Pacific Ocean, initially you see a good mirror image getting older yeah. and older. But then you encounter the coast, the western coast of South America, and things stop. Mm -hmm. So that's where the subduction zone is, yeah. and that ocean crust is being subducted down and consumed underneath the South American yeah. plate, right? Uh -huh. And if you move more to the west, you see that the, the oceanic crust does continue to get older and older and older. Yeah, yeah. So that's it does. an interesting comparison. It is. And you know what? And sometimes this can be a little bit confusing because they are, there are these spreading centers all over the earth and even all over the Pacific Ocean. All right, so it's not as it is in the Atlantic Ocean where it's splitting it almost right in half. It's a little bit different. There's a little bit more going on there, and we're going to explore that further. But it looks like a good way to identify those spreading centers is look for the very young crust, right? Definitely. Okay, Definitely. good. All right, what's on the next slide? Uh, now is our mastery check. Okay, so for this mastery check, we're going to ask you to do a little bit of work in Google Earth. And what we would like you to do is make a couple of place marks. Mm -hmm. What are they going to be looking for in their place marks? Well, you want to find a uh, divergent boundary. Good. All right. And then you want to find a, um, an ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergent boundary. And if I was going to look for an ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergent boundary, what would I be looking for on the surface? I think I would look in the Pacific Ocean and I'd be looking for those island arcs. Those, those island arcs. Those chains of arc-shaped volcanoes. Definitely. Yeah. That's definitely the sign that yep. there is a ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergent boundary. Then they're going to be looking for an ocean-to-continent convergent boundary. We've actually told them a couple of examples of sure those have. Uh, in the segment, so I hope you wrote those down. Uh, and then the last one, the continent, the continent, which we also provide an example right. for. So I hope you remember that one as well. And then the last two things we want you to do is take a look and find one spot where you know there's very young ocean crust and one spot where you know there's very old ocean crust. Uh, put those into a nice Google Earth tour. You know how to do that already. And uh, that'll wrap it up for this segment of the videos. Thanks a lot for talking to me, Mr. Z. Thank you very much, Mr. Right. Wad. Love to be here. Nice job, guys.